Okay, uh, students, I think uh, all of you would have uh, looked into my previous lecture, right? And uh, moving on to the next lecture today. In the previous one, I had uh, dealt about the basics of satellite communications, okay? And uh, in this, we will actually move on to a few more concepts and uh, try and understand as to how uh, we can go about utilizing satellites for the purpose of communication and security okay and uh, one request that i would uh, do to all of you is that you can actually uh, look up to the previous lecture if in case you were not able to uh, attend my previous class okay um, i want you to look into the video so that we stay in sync uh, so that we try and understand as to what concepts are being taught and uh, uh, you know, it, it is going to be more useful for uh, for me as well as for you okay so that we can stay in sync with our thoughts and with our uh, discussions okay fine at the uh, end of the day before end of the day okay after some time i will be posting in the link as well wherein you can watch um, the uh, lecture uh, videos fine so today we will just uh, continue our discussion uh, with regards to previous class, okay, or uh, wherever we had left. And an efficient way for the purpose of communications, basically. And then comes uh, the purpose of security, okay and how they can be utilized to the max and what best that we can do to understand and uh, try and extract data from the satellites launched. Are you all able to see my presentation? Arvind, is it visible? Oh, sir, it's visible, sir. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, last class, you know, we had looked into the textbooks uh, just for the benefit of people who have joined today for my class. Uh, okay. Uh, we will be using this textbook, which is uh, textbook one, Dennis Roddy. This will be covering all your five modules. Okay. Only your five modules, and uh, if in case still you need more information about uh, the concepts covered, then uh, you can always feel free to um, get this textbooks perhaps in detail. Okay, so these three reference textbooks. Uh, I would suggest that uh, you, know, you go ahead with uh, uh, textbook one, okay, wherein it has all the concepts uh, and all the uh, topics covered we had just looked into the satellite okay and uh, why is the need for communication okay all these uh, we are actually discussed okay um, section c students i think you haven't uh, uh, attended my last class but i hope that all of you have uh, got my lecture video one of you from c section can you please confirm that Jaydeep, you are in C section. Jaydeep, are you there? Anybody from C section, can you just confirm if you have received my uh, first lecture video? You can use the chat box as well.
think Aravind, you are in C-section, right? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, so have you have you received my previous lecture video? The link is available, sir, on link the class group. Right, fine, okay. So all of you, okay, just make sure that um, you, know, you go through that so that you'll be in with whatever I teach, okay? Fine, so we had discussed what's a satellite and um, how, uh, how exactly we use uh, satellites for the purpose of communication. Right? The uplink, downlink, and the importance of ionosphere and uh, you know, various other stuffs. Then we had also discussed about broadcasting and uh, its role in the field of telecommunications. The most important advantage of having a satellite is communication to unreachable area. Okay. So this is one such important uh, uh, criteria where, you know, through cell phone network, sometimes you will not be able to reach. But then through satellites, you can reach any uh, nook and corner of the globe. Okay, so just we have to make sure that the satellite is in, is placed in proper orbit. Okay, and um, it actually receives signals from the base station, and then it transmits proper information. Okay, so each satellite okay placed can cover more than a country. So which means not only uh, the country but also the neighboring countries also can be covered with a single satellite. But we have to make sure that you know it is in sync uh, with our orbit okay and uh, it's in line of sight okay so that the antennas can transmit information without any loss and there are a lot of applications okay um, which satellites are used extensively these are nothing but your um, pollution detection okay how much of water is polluted and um, weather conditions now why is this important weather conditions because weather forecasting can be done and once weather forecasting is done um, it, it is going to be helpful for the farmers okay for for the fishermen um, where you know it becomes easy for them to try and understand as to when they can plant seeds uh, so on and so forth right so you know, these are you know, some of the advantages uh, with satellite and the best the best part is that you know you can have a wider coverage okay wider coverage any unreached area maybe you're on a mountain you're on a peak okay and uh, you're not reachable through cell phone networks but satellites can catch you up okay. so that's why you can see that these satellites are also used for the purpose of security and um, satellite phones are employed where you always stay connected directly via the satellite okay and search and rescue operations of aircrafts okay so this is also possible because they are in touch with satellite and uh, the base station can actually you know track as to what exactly the tran uh, the transmitter is telling from the satellite and uh, it can actually track as to where you know your aircraft has fallen in case of emergencies okay so these are some of the services that we um, saw in the previous class okay how frequency allocations now, now keep in mind um, different frequencies are used for different applications i cannot use the same frequency for the same application okay so the best uh, thing that we all use is the navigation systems right so here in this navigation system, it, it actually needs at least three points, okay, three uh, coordinates, X, Y, and Z, wherein it can actually pinpoint any location, okay. So mobile satellite services, then uh, landmines, then in the field of navigation, in the field of uh, meteorological services, okay. So all this information can be tracked. So these are some of the list of frequencies that you can see uh, which are used extensively okay now we will be using KU band 
okay it is uh, from 12 to 18 gigahertz range okay is the most used uh, frequency range for the purpose of uh, satellite communications okay uh, yeah 12 to 18 is the most used and one thing that you guys have to keep in mind is that you know launching a satellite and keeping the satellite in its place is a real big task okay because there are a lot of parameters that comes into picture it can be the weather it can be the attenuation it can be noise it can be the battery level it can be the solar panels the amount of power that is being received okay the signals that are getting transmitted from the base station okay on the in the earth uh, to the satellite which is actually out there in space so there are a lot of things um, that keeps the communication going okay so for all of these we need to have um, you know uh, hand calculations done through which these calculations are implemented one by one and we will be able to uh, try and understand as to how much with how much velocity that your satellite is traveling and um, should we slow it down or should we speed it up is it in sync with uh, our orbit okay so those are called geostationary orbits so you know we will, we will try and understand as to how exactly uh, these concepts are dealt with okay so intelsat okay intelsat stands for international telecommunications satellite so international IN, IN international tel telecommunications sat satellite okay so intelsat is used and uh, here you know this organization was created in 64 now why do you think we have to have a standard format if everyone starts using some or the other frequency then it becomes tedious right we should have a standard format where we try and understand as to who is using what and how much band should be used for communication how much band should be used for military purpose so everything is reserved including your frequency for wi-fi and bluetooth okay it's all predefined So this organization Intelsat was established in 64 and it has about uh, more about 140 countries which are acting as uh, you know members and more than 40 uh, investing entities so there are a lot of people who actually invest in the satellite business okay so in 2001 Intelsat became a private company <coughs> Excuse me, and May 2002, the company began providing end to end solutions through uh, points of presence around the globe. So, when it became a private company, decisions were able, they were able to take decisions on uh, a flexible manner and uh, they started utilizing it you know, for the purpose of uh, communications, okay, which is nothing but uh, uh least fiber and points presence so you can you can term it as p o p s okay p o p s so if we keep you know looking onto the satellite you know there are n number of things n number of possibilities uh you know which can actually be explored just because of a single satellite um, your internet connection your entertainment okay the, the use of television and uh, you know mobile networks all these are connected to satellites okay. so so we will see how the evolution of uh, intelsats happened okay so just have a look at this diagram uh, Akash Singh, do you have a question? Your hand is raised. Any question? Please ask. Nothing, nothing. Okay, so then you can unraise your hand. Okay, thank you. So feel free to ask questions you can unmute you can use the chat box you can raise your hand okay fine 
So this is uh, about your evolution of uh, Intel SACS. Okay. Now, if you see carefully, okay, let me just zoom in a little so that it becomes easier for us to look into the numbers. Right? I hope it's more clear now. Right? Okay. So, Intel SAC you know, has started way, way long back in 65 and it goes on. Okay. Uh, we have the update rate in 87. Okay, but then still there are a lot of updates that has happened. Mm, fine. So the prime contractor, the width, okay, the height of uh, the satellite, and what kind of launch vehicles. Now, uh, you know, keep in mind that you know whenever we launch a satellite, we need the vehicle to transport it. Okay. So it is just like you know an important item. And that needs to be transported to the space. So that is nothing but called your launch vehicles. Okay. So these vehicles will carry your satellite, and then once the satellite uh, reaches a particular uh, point, you know, it it's on its own with the use of uh, communications. We can actually turn it to the left, the right, increase the height or decrease the height. Uh, we can tilt the satellite to a certain degree. We can make sure that the solar panels are, you know, towards the sun, facing the sun rays, so that you know the battery starts charging. And once the battery is charged, you know, it is it is alive. Okay. So all these uh, things are very much important for the efficient utilization of satellites. Uh, power and if you can see here you know, towards your left hand side there are a lot of parameters okay the lifetime uh, which means the time that it actually started functioning to the time it's, it stopped working okay so in my previous uh, class i had told that most of the satellites you know normally we use them for about 10 to 15 years okay and after 15 years we uh, once we once we try and understand that uh, you know the efficiency is going down and there's no option for us to fix it okay software updates also do happen okay wirelessly so if even even after that if it's still inefficient then uh, we will go ahead and uh, kill the satellite so when i say kill the satellite we actually um, bury the satellite so when i say when we bury the satellite it means that we stop tracking the movement of the satellite and we see that you know uh, it goes off the orbit so once it goes off the orbit it goes and hits some other uh, you know meteor or something and then it gets damaged permanently okay so these are nothing but called satellite graveyards okay so, so many satellites have been destroyed in this uh, fashion okay and uh, uh, there's a lot of space junk actually developed so all these things are to be cleaned up and there are there are a lot of ngos uh, taking up this task in getting the space junk from you know, cleaned okay so where they treat that you know without this uh, functionality um, the space is going to be with a lot of junk okay now just like how most of our rivers are polluted okay just because of one item plastic similarly our space is getting polluted with a lot of junk okay these debris of um, the aircraft or probably these debris from the launch vehicle debris from you know, the collision of the satellite and the meteor or probably two satellites okay so all these are staying just up there uh, you know revolving because there's no gravity there out there in space right so they just revolve there and uh, sometimes it could even damage uh, those working satellites if they come on the way okay so a lot of concepts a uh, lot of things a uh, lot of imagination actually is needed here in order to understand uh, you know, the concepts involved in satellite communications okay it's a very scoring subject as i told you previously okay um, 
my my notes is sufficient for that and uh, for your further reference okay you can also have uh, the textbook okay uh, in some time i will be probably in in few days i'll be even sending you the uh, textbook as well okay so that you can try and uh, uh, read it okay and uh, as mentioned earlier if you still have um, you know the thirst or hunger for satellite communications then we do have uh, reference books as well which can be referred uh, for further uh, knowledge enhancements okay fine so you can see that the height and the width is also mentioned okay the launch vehicles name of the launch vehicles then uh, the spacecraft mass okay now if you see here the mass of each uh, satellite is actually increasing exponentially one of the reasons why this is happening is because you know uh, either the battery capacity is increased or probably you know the the items involved for R&D for research and development at space, okay, carrying many items, okay, for experimentation is increased. So due to which the weight of the satellite also does increase. Just just compare, you know, the first Intel Sat and the sixth Intel Sat. You can see that how complex things have become. See the antennas, the number of antennas, and how they are placed, and uh, the multi-stage uh, concepts. But here, you know, we, we do not find all those things evident, right? And uh, the other things that uh, you can uh, uh, observe here is the payload mass, okay? Communication payload, which is exclusively which meant for, you know, uh, communication between the transmitter and, you know, the receiver. And how the information is passed from one point to another point, okay? then uh, uh, you can see the design lifetime okay 1.5 years and uh, right so the last one was for was designed for about 10 years okay for so as and when the years passed by you know they were able to um, increase the lifetime they were able to make more reliable things okay see one thing it is not a good climate there in space lot of solar winds okay the temperature goes beyond boiling point so which means your temperatures the, the materials that you are using should be capable of taking up such harsh environments okay so when i say harsh environments it means that you know it can go beyond a certain level okay uh, so your materials should be innovative okay so carbon fiber is one such materials okay which can withstand high temperatures lightweight and uh, not only not only in the positive direction of your temperature it can go even too cold okay freezing cold so satellites should be able to communicate even with uh, such kind of harsh environments okay and you can see the number of um, voice channels that are increased as uh, you know the model has changed okay so this nothing but tells us that you know the communication between our transmitter and receiver okay um, the bandwidth has increased and uh, we have increased the number of channels as well each channel for communication now operation bandwidth now see this you have about you know starting from 50 megahertz from your generation one to you know your, your gen 6 uh, from intensat which is going beyond you know megahertz right it's going in the in the gigahertz range as i told you the most used uh, band is the ku band which is about 12 gigahertz to 18 gigahertz please please right so, so this should be kept in mind so the bandwidth has drastically increased okay so if a question is asked you know with regards to the evolution then you can just put these parameters okay 
and mention as to how they have played a very important role. Now we have seen the figure and we have seen the capacity and uh, the number of voice channels which is increased okay and uh, the lifetime has also increased then it covers intelsat okay now it it is actually an international telecommunication satellite which covers three main regions okay so it is the aor ior and por so then for the indian ocean the atlantic ocean and the pacific ocean so it covers these three main regions now why do we need these oceans why do we need to cover the oceans it is because we will be using you know, for the ships right ships also need to communicate between each other so you know these regions are also covered the satellites are positioned in geostationary orbit above a particular ocean where they can provide transoceanic telecommunications route okay so these uh, ships should be able to communicate with ship e and ship b or probably to uh, to the help center okay where if there is any sos or if there is any uh, emergency okay then immediate team rescue team can be sent so it's not only with regards to navigation not only with regards to communication it's also with regards to security okay so this is all about your intel sat so three main regions aor ior and por okay fine then we had uh, insat okay insat is nothing but the uh, satellites which were launched by our own team okay so indian national satellite system okay so that is happening with the insat so this is a series of uh, multipurpose geostationary satellites which was launched by isro now isro is actually playing a very important role in the country where you know it has taken up a lot of projects based on chandrayaan okay then uh, mars machine uh, and uh, you know many other tasks which has helped the country uh, to to a drastic extent okay including the farmers okay the fishermen and uh, many many other such things very live or important information is sent and uh, you know now uh, things are tracked okay just go through these points okay I have a few important points just go through them and uh, you can understand as to how these satellites play an important role Okay, so I think you have gone through the uh, points uh, which I have mentioned here. Right? So way back in EP three, okay, this was uh, commissioned. Okay, this was established, and um, it's a joint venture. Okay, um, between uh, Department of Space, uh, Telecommunications, Meteorological Department, then Doordarshan, PIR, which is on India Radio. and uh, the overall coordination and management of uh, intel or or your insat okay speaking uh, is actually with the secretary level of the coordination committee okay 
Now, what are actually the banks used by these uh, inside? There's nothing but your CSKU banks. Okay. As I told you previously, these uh, banks are most extensively used. Okay. So now you can see this uh, you know, table here. Okay, where you have L, S, C. So when I say C band, it means it is from 4 gigahertz to 8 gigahertz, right? Now when I say it is S band, it is 2 to 4, okay? Similarly, we have, you know, um, any such bands. I want you to actually go through this thoroughly so that sometimes when I just say C band, immediately you should be able to remember that it's um, between 4 to 8. So when I say uh, KU band, then you should be able to I identify that it's 12 g Okay, right. So, so these bands were used for uh, two version. Okay, that's your television purpose. And uh, some of the satellites have very high resolution radiometer. Okay, CCD cameras for meteorological imaging. Now, why do we need all this? Because we need to understand the planetary motion. We need to understand, uh, revisit the Kepler's laws. We need to understand how these external objects are responding or how they are revolving and, uh, you know, many vital details are to be expected. Okay, continuing the discussion, um, uh, it launched uh, INSAT 1 in August 83. Okay. And uh, it was the first satellite launched but could not fulfill the mission 1A. 1A was not able to. It was launched but it was a failure. As I told you, uh, these missions are not so easy, right? Uh, it's so difficult. You have to maintain a lot of things, maintain a lot of parameters. Even a, even a slight, you know, slightly if, if the satellite goes here and there, you know, um, there is chances of permanent damage okay so it's, it's really very uh, important to understand the seriousness of parameters involved in satellites okay so because of these satellites uh, these days you know we have uh, bandwidth increased for our internet right i remember telling in the previous class we used to have connections with, which was just about 56 kbps okay not mbps kbps not even one mbps or half mbps kbps okay where it was just sufficient only for browsing checking mails you know uh, responding to a mail of course it used to take time okay and uh, as time passed by there was a uh, lot of improvement done in the field of uh, um, you know internet these days including the class that we are in right now is happening just because of internet right so that's the importance of a satellite so it enabled rapid uh, expansion of tv and modern com communications to even the remote areas okay so even um, those areas which are untouched okay uh, the signals are able to pass through and uh, they are able to experience high quality uh, information now um, a summary of uh, insight okay of the 24 satellites launched in the course of uh, insight program 10 are still in operation as i told you few will be in operation if we are able to extract data if we are able to make them work okay we will still keep using them but if in case we feel that maintaining it it's too costly okay then we will probably forego it and we will we will send it to graveyards okay how do we send it to graveyards we just stop maneuvering the satellite when i say maneuvering the satellite uh, you know having some efforts to keep the satellite in place okay so when i don't do those efforts then it means that you know i am sending the satellite into the zone it's going to die okay insat 2e it is the last of the five satellites of INSAT 2 series. 2 series was also called as Pratik. Okay. 2 series was called Pratik. It carries 17 C band and 
lower extended C band transponders. Fine. Uh, transponders are communication devices which can actually transmit and receive information. And uh, uh, EIRP, you will be seeing a lot of uh, you know places where we study about EIRP, which is nothing but your effective isotropic uh, radiated power. Okay, so you will be seeing this even in your wireless labs as well. Okay, and uh, it carries a very high resolution imaging capacity. Now, why is this high resolution needed? Because if your camera capacity is good then it can actually capture a lot of detail. So if there is a lot of detail, we can zoom in where the image quality doesn't uh, doesn't get hampered, right? So camera resolution, or the way how uh, things are transferred are actually very much needed. Okay. Fine. Then uh, thermal infrared water vapor channels due to peak. Okay, there can be vapor formation. So you know, the dimensions for those are also given. So these are some of the things with the uh, uh, INSAT 3 series. Now what was the 2 series called? Prati, right? So 3 series, uh, it's a multi-purpose satellite which was launched by Ariane in 2003. Okay. Now calculations should be precise. Okay, we should place it at a particular um, coordinate okay we just cannot randomly place any satellite at any orbit okay the date time is also selected for its launch okay so we have to make sure that all this information is accurate as much as possible okay so it is located at 93 and a half degrees east longitude now i think many of you know that our globe has a lot of imaginary lines imaginary lines which is your latitudes and longitudes right um, which runs towards left and right of the globe and top and bottom right north south east and west so as these are uh, you know passing through you know we are able to place them in proper uh, location so that that is maintained okay even if i place it in in 94.5 then it, it's going to be an error okay so proper calibration is very much important so this can cover okay uh, three channels provided okay 12 normal c band transponders uh, nine channels provide expanded coverage uh, this uh, inside it covers from middle east to southeast asia okay uh, with EIRP, which is nothing but your radiated power, effective isotropic radiated power of 38 uh, dB max, and three channels okay, which provide India coverage. So, nine channels are used for Middle East, and three channels are used for India coverage with EIRP of 36, and six. Uh, provide India coverage with an ERP of 36. Now, why are all this important? Because the power rating is very much needed. Now, is it really necessary to understand the power rating? Yes, of course, because we need to design the system in such a way that it doesn't drain off the battery, right? Because at some point of time, your satellite gets hidden from the solar light or from the sun rays. So, when it gets hidden, uh, due to the eclipse okay so it will not receive any sun rays so which means those solar cells do not get charged so if those cells are not charged okay then uh, instantaneously you know we might lose communication so if we lose communication we do not know if it's in the right path so we have to place the satellite in a proper orbit so all this um, needs to be considered to a greater extent with attention to detail. So the camera provides one by one kilometer ground resolution. So from a one kilometer uh, resolution, you know, it should be able to pick up uh, information. Okay, it has infrared uh, cameras as well installed. Okay. 
So three D, okay, three D is at three D was launched in two thousand thirteen, and uh, it is positioned at uh, eighty two degrees east longitude. The payloads have uh, imaging, okay, imaging hardware, then uh, sound can actually capture sound, then data relay, search and rescue transponder. All the transponders provide coverage over a large part of the Indian Ocean, which is IOR, right? Uh, that's the region where we actually are interested. Uh, it not only you know, serves our country, but also it covers the neighboring countries as well, which is uh, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Maldives, Nepal, uh, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, and many other countries. Okay, not only our country, but the other countries as well okay now why is this uh, essential it is essential because um, you know we can we can also offer help to the neighboring countries if uh, if you know some information is needed so it, it's a give and take policy right okay so this was launched in uh, 2003 and uh, is positioned at uh, 55 uh, degrees east longitude and it carries 24 uh, C band transponders. Yes, I think uh, probably we will stop here uh, till Insat 3D okay? and uh, continue with uh, Kalpana 1 and uh, uh, EduSat and Insat 4 series maybe in the next class. Uh, will that be okay with all of you? Yes. Uh, should we conclude our class for the day? Yeah. I want you all to respond. At least one of you can unmute and respond. Bhavana, can we continue this topics, remaining topics in the next class? You could use the chat box system. Mm, I hope all of you have joined the uh, um, Google Classroom, uh, where uh, Roach, thank you, thank you for the message. Uh, where we can uh, uh, actually give him the attendance, or I will do one thing I will post the attendance here in the chat box so that it becomes easy for all of you to, uh, you know, uh, give in uh, your attendance. Just give me a moment, I will be posting Google Classroom ID also. Uh, you, you have the information of Google Classroom. Yes, do you guys have the information? Because I think uh, C section uh, they have not joined. Okay. Anyway, I will be I will be posting it. Okay, I will be I will be posting the information. Okay. Um, I have posted the link here in the chat box. Um, just look into it, and uh, I'll be sending the Google Classroom link also. Okay and all of you can join okay find them thank you Jaideep, Jaideep, you are in C section, right? Yes, sir. C section. Okay. Yes, uh, Jaideep, I will be just sending in the link now here okay, in the okay. chat box. Uh, you can share this with your friends. Okay, this is going to be the link for classroom. Okay, so we will okay, I'll share. Yes, we will be using this temporarily. Okay, and uh, okay, sir. Yeah. 
um, if you want the code alone for classroom, even that I will be posting it right now. Okay, so exclusively if you just want the code, um, I have posted it. Okay, so that's the okay, Google sir. Classroom code. So copy that and probably you can help me in passing it to your class um, so that everyone can join in the classroom. Okay, I'll be posting this okay. link as well in the classroom. Fine. Fine. Thank you. Thank you all. Can we end the meeting? Jaydeep, yes, have sir. You, have you taken the link? Yes, sir. I took. Okay. Fine. So keep it somewhere, probably in a notepad or something. Uh, because once I end the meeting, then uh, you know, we cannot uh, get back to it. Okay. Yes, sir. Wait, 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 sir. And uh, at yes, this sir. point of time, you guys can yes. always get back to me. Okay. Uh, using the classroom, using uh, uh, using your class group, okay. Uh, we can have discussions on on anything. Okay. Fine then. Thank you all.